The G6 self-propelled howitzer, or SPH, is one of the marvels of the South African defence industry. The combat experiences of the South African border war, also known as the Angolan Bush War, paved the way for such an excellent war machine's creation. Although it was designed in the early 1980s, this SPH continues to fascinate those of us who appreciate its futuristic design and extraordinary features. Today we will be investigating the G6, the wheels that bring hellfire. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel before we start, and give us a thumbs up if you like our video. To be notified of our new videos, please click the bell button. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares. The G6 is a real child of war, not a product of a conceptual study. This fact has given the SPH an unorthodox appearance and many unique features. Some sources give this artillery system the name G6 Rano. The combination of the G6 turret and the 6x6 Rano hull vehicle. But generally, just G6 is used for it. The story of this SPH goes back to the mid-1970s. South Africa had begun massive conventional raids into Angola and Zambia to eliminate the forward operating bases of the People's Liberation Army of Namibia. The South African units faced the 130mm M46 and the 122mm D30 howitzers and 122mm BM21 multiple rocket launchers. In those years, the South African Army had the Second World War vintage 88mm 25-pounder locally designated as G1 and 140mm BL 5.5-inch locally designated as G2 towered guns and 88mm Sexton SPHs. None of them could match their Soviet-made counterparts in terms of range. So in 1976, South Africa initiated the Sherbet III project to have more capable artillery pieces. Due to its apartheid policy, the country was under heavy sanctions from the United Nations. So Westerners could not directly support South Africa, which fought against communism allegedly in this endeavour. But the Western intelligence services did provide some technical documents for the Sherbet III project. Also, Gerald Bull assisted in the design of the new G5 howitzer introduced in 1983. He had worked on the GC45 program before. We should note that before the G5, South Africa had also acquired some US 155mm M1 field guns and already designated them as G3. Additionally, the South Africans had produced a limited amount of the Israeli 155mm M68, locally called G4. Thanks to this last project, South Africa gained a critical capability to design and produce modern artillery systems. However, early studies had shown that the G5s of the South African Army's artillery regiments could not keep up with the rattles in long-range raids. So. The design works on a new SPH began nearly parallel with the towered one. South Africa decided to develop a wheeled system, which has lesser unit and life cycle costs, is easier to be repaired and be maintained, has lower fuel consumption, and has higher speed and range than the tracked vehicles. They would also not need tank transporters. These features were perfect for the South African Army's long-range raid operations, which were conducted up to 1,000 kilometers away from the main bases sometimes. The first prototype of the new G6 was completed in 1983. The serial production of the SPH began in 1988. The driver's cabin is in the front and separated from the engine and turret. Three large bulletproof windows at the front and sides afford excellent visibility over 180 degrees. During action, they are closed by armoured plates for further protection, and the driver uses the periscope. Forward of the front cabin, 
there is a lateral wedge-shaped box that doubles as a container for projectiles, and as a bush clearing device capable of cutting through trees and shrubs. The engine compartment is between the turret and the driver's station, which contains a comprehensive engine monitoring system. There are air conditioning systems in the turret and the driver compartment. The G6 can be ready for action in one minute and leave its position within 30 seconds after firing. The G6 can be fired from the wheels, but during the firing, the four out triggers are lowered hydraulically to the ground, two at the rear and one between the first and second wheels either side to make the SPA more stable. The G6 is the first SPH with a full autonomous laying and navigation capability. The ballistic computer of the fire control system also calculates the effects of atmospheric conditions and corrects the gun's position horizontally and vertically. The 51 horsepower Deutz F2L511 turret power unit executes all traverse and elevation processes, so the SPH can perform its firing duty even if the vehicle's engine is not running. The turret can be traversed 90 degrees to the right and left, but the SPH can fire only 40 degree traverse angles on both sides. The G6 has a semi-automatic hydraulic loading system. It carries 39 155mm rounds and 50 charges. During firing, the ammunition handler and the driver typically leave the vehicle. They prepare and load the ammunition from the outside rear to the loader inside the turret. The G6 also has direct fire capability. The steel hull of SPH is resistant to shell splinters and small arms fire. The front arc can withstand 22mm to 23mm ammunition. The reinforced underbody can resist three Soviet-made TM-46 anti-tank landmines containing explosives equivalent to 5.7 kilograms of TNT. There are an automatic fire warning and suppression system in the engine compartment, and a thermal sensor in the turret, which gives a loud sound signal when the maximum temperature in the fighting compartment is reached. The G6 can be operated in a CBRN environment. The G6 has a permanent 6x6 drive. Only the front wheels are steerable, so if the SPH loses them, it practically becomes immobile. Yet in the case of losing some of the rear wheels, the G6 can keep moving. Thanks to its highly effective suspensions, large wheels and central tyre inflation system, the SPH has good cross-country mobility. Still, its speed reduces to 30 to 60 km per hour off-road depending on the terrain. It has good mobility on soft ground, like mud, and offers a comfortable ride on the road. Due to the long distance between the front and rear axles, its trench width is insufficient compared with the tracked vehicles. The many subsystems of the G6 were continually upgraded or replaced by improved products. It caused logistic difficulties. So in 1993, South Africa implemented a modernization program, codenamed Vasvat, and the equipment and characteristics of all SPH had been standardized. The upgraded G6s are now called GV6 by the South African Army. Fifteen GV6s are now upgraded under the Muhali project, which includes the redevelopment and supply of obsolete component alternatives, the fitment of proposed alternatives onto a fleet leader platform supplied by the client, and the logistic development of the components. There are also two G6 variants with 155mm 52 caliber guns. One has a 23-litre chamber, and the other a 25-litre one. These versions, called G652, have the same features other than the guns. The G652 has multiple rounds simultaneous impact capability, and it can reach a range of 67 kilometres with V-lap ammunition. Thanks to its advanced automation systems, the crew is reduced to three, and the rate of fire is increased to eight rounds per minute. Despite its higher performance, the G652 have no order yet. South Africa also offered the G6's self-propelled anti-aircraft gun variant with the Marksman turret for the international market, but no country chose it. 
Chile intended to produce a local variant of the G6 under license. Only one prototype vehicle called CCSP45 was built, but later this project was terminated. In 2005, India tested the G6's turret on the T-72 and Arjun main battle tanks hulls, but the project was later cancelled. There were two Iraqi cousins of the G6 also developed with the technical assistance of Gerald Bull. The Al Majnun had a 155mm gun, and the enlarged Al Far had a 210mm gun. These two SPHs never reached the serial production stage. Oman, South Africa, and the United Arab Emirates are the users of the SPH. The crew of the G6 is six person, consisting of a commander, layer, breach operator, loader, ammunition handler, and driver. The SPH is 10.34 meters long, 3.4 meters wide, and 3.3 meters high. Its combat weight is 47,000 kilograms. The 518 horsepower Magiris Deutz FL413 FFR air-cooled diesel engine provides a maximum speed of 90 km per hour. The range of the vehicle is 700 km. The G6 can negotiate 0.5 meter vertical steps and 1 meter trenches. It can forward to a depth of 1 meter. The 155 mm 45 caliber gun has a range of 30,000 meters with a standard projectile, 40,500 meters with an extended range full bore base bleed projectile, and 52,500 meters with the VLAP munition. The rate of fire is between 4 to 5 rounds per minute, or a burst capability of 3 rounds in 25 seconds can be achieved. The elevation of the gun is between 5 and 75 degrees. The barrel can be traversed at 90 degrees on both sides. A 12.7mm or 7.62mm machine gun can be fitted on the commander's cupola. The G6 was baptised by fire even before its serial production did not begin. In 1987, the South African Army decided to deploy all four pre-production SPHs into Angola for combat trials as part of Operation Hooper. They left the Potschefstrum Artillery School and travelled nearly 2,500 kilometres to the combat zone on their wheels. During the deployment, one of them suffered an engine failure. Its connecting rod on one of the pistons was broken. So only three G6s managed to reach Angola. The crippled G6 was towed to Mavinga. Three days later, a new engine was installed and the SPH joined the others. After they successfully completed their trials in real combat, all four G6s returned to South Africa on their wheels. During the Battle of Quito Quinavale, the South African Army tasked three G6s, operating as an independent battery, to bombard the strategic Angolan airfield in the region. The South African Special Forces acted as the Ford Artillery Observers and provided accurate data. Using this data, the G6 prevented conducting air operations from the airfield. Moreover, on one occasion, the G6s managed to destroy four Angolan MiG-21s, whose NATO reporting name is Fishbed, on the ground as they attempted to take off. So Angola had to relocate its aircraft to another airstrip far away, in Menongue. Due to this redeployment, the flight times and the effectiveness of the MiGs decreased significantly. The G6s could get into firing position in one minute, and then send their round accurately, which made the SPH deadly. But the real deal was its quick redeployment capability, which made the Angolan counter-battery action fruitless. During the last two years of the South African border war, the G6 became a pain in the neck for the Angolan and Cuban troops, and the People's Liberation Army of Namibia. Since the war ended, South Africa has stored most of its G6s. Today, only two SPHs are in active service for training missions. Yet, the G6s of the United Arab Emirates have continued to fight in Yemen since 2015. The G6 had been one of the best SPHs until the new systems with a 155mm 52 caliber gun arose. Many may claim that it was the best. We would not oppose that. The G5 52 variant can still compete with its latest Western rivals. But this SPH was designed for the savannas. Arano would look impressive in Europe, but it might not be as effective as in Africa. So the G6 has not achieved the commercial success it deserves. But it deserves to be mentioned as a legend. Who can oppose this?
Thanks for watching our video and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click the bell button to be notified of our new videos. Also, you can now click the join button to support our channel. And as always, we would greatly appreciate all of your likes, comments and shares.